Welcome to ESPN College Football, presented by Boost Infinite. And welcome to the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. Homecoming weekend with a celebratory tone here at Tulane. Last year, a conference championship and a bowl win over USC. So this fall's success is now the expectation here at Yeoman Stadium. And here comes Tulane at five and one. And the Green Wave acting more like a college football blue blood of late. 17 wins the last two years. That puts them in the same company as the likes of Alabama and Ohio State. They are the heavy favorites to repeat in the American this year. And as you can see, they need a win here this afternoon to keep pace with SMU. The Mustangs already a winner this week. Hi, everybody, and welcome to New Orleans. I'm Beth Mullins, along with Kirk Morrison, Stormy Bonatoni down on the field. Of course, a win today, Kirk, also makes yeah. Tulane bowl eligible, but they're not thinking <laughs> about just any bowl. They're thinking about New Year's. Yeah, bowl eligibility. That was for the last year's Green Wave team. I still remember that just a couple seasons ago, this season, this team was 2-10. and ten. Those expectations have now changed. This is all about conference championships, something that they did a year ago. They want to get back to that New Year's Six, and they feel like they've got the quarterback to do it. Yeah, great shot with Michael Pratt, who was the most outstanding player of the Cotton Bowl last year. Beth, in the transfer portal world that we live in, this is a guy who said, you know what? I don't want to transfer. I want to stay here. I want to be here. And Michael Pratt, I call him the Pratt Attack has been his normal self, what we saw last year. An outstanding quarterback who has great poise. He's a servant leader, his head coach Willie Fritz talks about. That's the reason why the Green Wave are right where they are right now, set themselves up for another conference championship. Really good as a starter, and of course, he did not play in the Ole Miss game, their only loss this year. He's got a really good young running back alongside him, too. You talk about Tulane. Last year, it was about Ty J. Spears. Now, he's in the National Football League with the Tennessee Titans. So, Makai Hughes comes in. He's the true, the redshirt freshman running back that has been outstanding. This offense has now gotten the gear because of the redshirt freshman and what he's been able to bring. It's the Pratt attack along with the Hughes train. The Green Wave feel like they're ready to roll. Yeah, and they'll take on a North Texas team that's won three of their last four. So be seen in your green today, whether it's mean or riding the wave in New Orleans. Texas bringing a little bit of confidence into this road test against Tulane. They are coming off their best game of the season against Temple and are just a field goal away from riding a four game win streak into this game since making a change at quarterback. Chandler Rogers was not the starter out of fall camp. That was Stone Earl. But since taking the reins fully after week two, this offense has been the top unit in the American Conference, averaging over 477 total yards and 35 points per game. He credits a lot of his recent success to his experience and quick chemistry with the guys around him, but also told me it feels like the culture and buy-in for this whole team has shifted. The head coach, Eric Morris, has lit a fire under this group. The accountability and intensity has been different. They got a tough task today against the league's best defense and a big crowd, but they're motivated that they can have a good one and build on that performance. And Stormy, we will see that match up right away because on paper it is this North Texas offense, best in the league against the top defense in the American in Tulane. And Chandler Rogers is the junior out of Mansfield, Texas. Took over after the 0-2 start, and he's been 3-1 and one as the guy. Yeah, smooth. When you watch him on film, he is so smooth. In the pocket, out of the pocket. He's got a 75-yard rush on his resume as well. He does a little bit of everything for this offense of North Texas. There you see his numbers, the 12 touchdowns and the one interception. That's been the big difference. His ball security has been dynamite, and he'll complete his first pass attempt of the afternoon out across the 30 to Jordan Smart and a gain of six. And uh, this is the matchup where if North Texas is going to have a shot today as a big underdog, they've got to play the way they have the last couple of weeks and put up some numbers, Kurt. Rogers will take off and run with it, and he's got a first down all the way out to the 45-yard line. Good with his feet. He'll pick up 14 there. Yeah, there's a calmness to him, right? There was no panic. The pocket breaks down a little bit, and he finds ways to gain yards. That's why he's the starting quarterback right now. For the first-year head coach and the Mike Leach disciple, Eric Morris. So we'll see some of those air raid principles as Io Adei gets the call. He is the second leading rusher 
in the American. So you've got two of the top three guys in the league in the game here this afternoon on the ground. Yeah, but when you look at North Texas, they have a three-back committee. They're going to rotate three backs between Johnson, Attaway, and Adeyi, like we just saw there. A little bit different on the opposite side for Tulane, with Makai Hughes being the lead back. Back to the original line of scrimmage, and that is it to Smart. It was Lance Robinson who's got four interceptions on the season. He had the coverage, and it's third down and long. Well, he refused to be blocked. That's why, Beth. Refused to be blocked. and made a nice open field tackle to set up this third and long. Out on the perimeter, and the catch is made, and it will depend on the spot. Jamori Macklin had to come back for it, and he's a yard short. And this is going to be on Jamori Macklin. Now, it looks like they're going to keep the offense on the field for North Texas, but Jamori Macklin runs this route just shy of the first down marker. If he takes that up just another yard, he maybe catches that football for a first down, but cut it off right before the yard marker for a first. They'll bring on an extra tight end here, and they will look to go for it on fourth and a long one. Hit as he throws, it's incomplete. And the first win of the day goes to the Tulane defense and Darius Hodges bringing the heat. Yeah, that's the first win is Mr. Hodges. We're going to see and call his name a lot today. Darius Hodges, one of the best players regardless of the American or FBS. Number eight at the top is going to continue to wreak havoc. Number six, I'm sorry, wreaks havoc on offenses. you got to locate where number six is at all time. Darius Hodges already doing what he does normally in the first quarter of a game. So the Mean Green take a chance early on, and now they will give Tulane the short field with Willie Fritz and his quarterback, Michael Pratt. Four-year starter, 36 times he's been out there. He was through some tough times his first couple of years. Only two wins two years ago, and then, of course, the big turnaround last year a 10-win turnaround for an FBS record as they won the American and won the Cotton Bowl. He is already their career leader in Official passing touchdowns. Correct positioning of the ball. It's first down. And he will start out with the redshirt freshman, Makai Hughes, alongside him in the backfield as they get the, uh, <laughs> the ball on the right yard line. Uh, it's the right hash mark. Remember, that ball was on the left hash mark uh, or the near hash mark to where our vantage point is and they got it set in the right spot. Alex Bauman is the motion man, and here goes Hughes, scampering on his first touch of the day inside the 25-yard line, and a long gain. Knocked out by Ridge Tejada after he goes 31 yards. This is one of the worst rushing defenses in FBS, and the one thing that you have to find a way is to get in your gap. If you're not going to be gap sound, Makai Hughes is going to find that opening, and you see the explosiveness already from the redshirt freshman. They've got a, an experienced offensive line in front of them as Hughes will run for short yardage there, anchored by their senior center, Sincere Hainsworth, <laughs> their leader and all AAC first teamer a year ago. And Sincere and Pratt have a really strong bond as the two big voices for this offense. Well, I'll tell you this, 52, the center, Sincere, you mentioned. He doesn't play Sincere, Beth. He is an animal up front, leading the way for not only his running game, but also keeping his quarterback protected. Quick throw to the outside and to Lawrence Keys down inside the 10. And he's got first down yardage. And it will be first and goal. Well, this is an area of concern. Me and you, we talked about this a lot, right, Beth? It's the red zone for Tulane. Once they get into the red zone, they've got to convert and turn these opportunities into touchdowns, not field goals. This is where a little bit of the criticism on Tulane this season, having converted these red zone opportunities into more touchdowns. Yeah, just over 50% of the time, in fact. So off of the fourth down stop by their defense, quickly 
downfield and into scoring territory. Pratt pumps, and now we'll run it up the middle, and he'll make it down to about the two-yard line. Got jackknife there after a six-yard game. Yeah, this is the ability of Michael Pratt, seeing that the play's breaking down, and just get what you can. Get what you can. Four yards, three yards, it doesn't matter. Set yourselves up for the next down. That's a good job by Michael Pratt. He's one of the reasons why they trust him so much in this offense. They'll go to three tight ends here on second and goal. Hughes to the left side, and he's caught in the backfield and taken down by Roderick Brown. No gain. Yeah, nice job by Roderick Brown. He's right there in the middle, 5'11", 303. And he did that on Sincere Hainsworth. We just talked about the center. That's the matchup I'm looking at, 52 and 10. These two guys are going to see a lot of each other this time. Fighting through was Roderick Brown for the tackle for loss. Third down goal from the two. Under center for Pratt. The rollout, the throw, the touchdown. Alex Bowman, the sophomore out of Red Bank, New Jersey, and one of the heroes of their Cotton Bowl win last year. Beth, it really starts with the pre-snap communication. There was no pre-snap communication for North Texas. And you've got a tight end who just motions across and nobody picks him up. Probably one of the easier touchdowns for Michael Pratt thrown in his career. Valentino Ambrosio with the extra point, 7-0 Green Wave. The Green Wave starting. They started with the run game to get him down there. But with the Pratt attack, just set him up. Ride the wave into the end zone. Bauman for six. Seven nothing. Michael Pratt and Tulane getting on the board first, and now a touchdown pass in 21 straight games. 38 of his 39 as the four-year starter here for the Green Wave. And they didn't have far to go, just 53 yards in six plays. It took them 41 seconds because their defense got a big fourth down stop just across midfield. And now back to the main green offense for the second time. How about Kirk's keys today for yeah. North Texas? Absolutely, North Texas. Poison Ivy edges, that means the tackles, right? Casey Mareka, Jet Duncan, those two tackles, they're going to have their hands full with Darius Hodges, Devin Deal. Can they hold up? And when I say no wipeouts, that means they got to keep the balance on that defensive front. That offense of Tulane is all about the running game. Guys need to be in gaps. This is what North Texas needs to do in order to win this football game today. Yeah, we'll uh, bust out the calamine lotion and we'll keep an <laughs> eye on Morika and Duncan, the tackles today. Oscar Attaway with the carry. One of three guys we anticipate at least to see. They are, of course, without uh, Ikaika Ragsdale, their starter in the opener, out with the injury. The only thing is I feel like the strength of this offense for the Mean Green has to be their skill position wide receivers. The running backs are going to be great, but this is one of the best rushing defenses in all of FPS, not just the American for Tulane. Second and 10, blitz coming. Rodgers gets away from it. Eyes downfield, heaves it. And the deep ball incomplete down around the 22-yard line. Intended for Macklin and Jarius Monroe was right there with him step for step. I don't know if that's good defense or Macklin didn't fight enough for that football. That's an opportunity that Macklin has to go up and go grab that football. You have a quarterback in Rodgers buying time, throwing it all the way downfield. Would have loved to see Macklin battle a little bit more for that ball, but outstanding job of just being in position from Monroe. This is what uh, Eric Morris and the offensive coordinator, Jordan Davis, were trying to avoid these third and long, second and long situations. They'll show four wide. Again, pressure coming and incomplete. 
on the throw, looking for Blair Conright, and it's fourth down. Yeah, the North Texas sideline was looking for a penalty. There was no flag. Just outstanding defense by Tulane. The tackles held up just enough, but I think it's the quarterback, Chandler Rogers, he felt a little bit of that pressure from Darius Hodges. Number six already just making an impact in this game. Eric Morris just livid with the officials that there wasn't a flag on the play. None was thrown. Sawyer Evans is the punter. They've used a couple of guys back there this year. Jaquan Jackson around his own 32-yard line to receive. End over end, it's short, and Jackson will come up to the 40 to make the fair catch. 36 yards on the boot. Tulane scored on its first possession. They've got it again when we come back. 8.40 to go in the first. ESPN College Football is presented by Boost Infinite. Get unlimited wireless and the latest iPhone every year. Uh, what a season it was for Tulane, winning their first American championship and then the dramatic finish, the stunner over Southern Cal in the Cotton Bowl. A turnaround from a two-win season to a 12-win season to finish ranked in the top 10 in the country last year. Right now, they are looking up at Air Force yeah. in terms of group of five teams. Air Force was a winner today over Navy. They are ahead in the AP poll. Let's see if they are ahead in the selection committee rankings. The first reveal will be on Halloween night. October 31st, can't wait, can't wait. Oh, a little trickery on the first play of this second possession. And it's Jaquan Jackson for a first down as we check out Kirk's keys. Well, everybody's getting a touch early on for the Tulane Green Wave, but look, green means go. That's what this Tulane offense has to be in the red zone. Too many times they've stalled and had to kick field goals. We've already seen one red zone opportunity. They score a touchdown. And lifeguards, yes, that means the front seven has to protect, stop the run. One of the best rush defenses in all of college football to help out the secondary with a lot of new young players in that back end. Michael Pratt doing a little bit of everything. He was blocking on that play. And on the reverse, first and 10, quickly into mean green territory. And uh, Hughes showing the strength of those legs down to the 40. Let's check out that first down. Well, sometimes you, you forget, Beth, that Michael Pratt, 6'3", 220 pounds. So sometimes a block means just getting in the way. That's all, Michael Pratt. Just laid on him a little bit. Put some hands on him. <laughs> you 220 pounds. You lay on a guy, get in the way. That's still considered a block, hey, but helping by, out the cause. By film study tomorrow, that's going to be a pancake. You know <laughs> it is. Yes. He's going to get the, uh, the check mark for a job well done. Second and five, big Chris Carter, the tight end, starts out in the backfield. Gets a block to help out, and Pratt on the move, trying to get around the corner and tripped up at the 35-yard line. It's going to bring up third and short. Ethan Wislowski, the redshirt freshman, took him down, a four-yard gain. Oh, man, it's just a missed opportunity. Look at the bottom of the screen. Chris Brazel, he's wide open. He saw the blitz. He's got the hand up. He's waving. Michael Pratt, throw it here, throw it here. A missed opportunity for Pratt in that two-lane offense. Could have been a big play if he would have saw the blitz coming from the right side. Third and one. Oh, a little brotherly shove. Okay. Alex Bauman, who caught the, uh, the uh, touchdown earlier, gets behind his quarterback, literally. The Crescent City Press. That's what <laughs> I'm going to call it. It's the Crescent City Press. Okay. Not the brotherly show. Nice. There we go. But another opportunity to keep these chains moving. And the one thing about Tulane, they don't go fast. This is an offense, very traditional. They're going to take their time, utilize the clock. Well, they've whooped up on their opponents in the first quarter of games this year, outscoring foes 62 to 10 this year. And they're looking for some more. Pratt checks it down. Hughes catches it on the move. And he'll dive down to the 26-yard line. Logan Wilson brought him down after a gain of seven. Yeah, only his fourth reception on the season. Makai Hughes doesn't catch the ball a ton out of the backfield, but I think that role is starting to expand in the offense. 
They'll go with a faster tempo here, load up the right side and throw it to the single coverage on the left to Jackson. Cuts it back inside, down inside the 10 yard line. And they'll mark him down at the eight and it's first and goal again. Well, Lorenzo Thompson is starting in place of number eight, John Davis. He's got to come down and make that play. That's a routine out route that Michael Pratt lines up and an outstanding job by Jackson of cutting back inside. Filling a defender, he cuts back inside and gets extra yards. Gain of 18. Well, I like the confidence too. Jackson, you got your man one-on-one, -on -one, go beat him. And he does. Hughes up the middle. Tumbles down to the four-yard line. Second and goal. But where are we at though on the field, Beth, right? We talked about it. Red zone. What can this offense do? First opportunity in the red zone, they scored a touchdown. The communication for North Texas has to be there. The last opportunity, no one communicated. Bauman caught a wide open touchdown. They have to talk, especially number 19, Jordan Brown. He's been the leader of that defense, the middle linebacker. Hughes, they'll fake it to him. They'll throw the slant incomplete, looking for Brazel, and it's broken up by Ridge Tejada. Right now it's third down. Uh, Tejada played through the ball. That's a nice play by Tejada because Brazel had both hands on it, but Tejada played through to the football. It's a nice job playing through. But this is four down territory. Third and goal. If they don't get it here, definitely two lane. I think we'll try to go for it on fourth. First incompletion of the day for Michael Pratt. He had hit on his first four passes. They'll RPO it. The quarterback will keep it. He'll get into the end zone, but the ball squirts loose. The officials still looking at one another and still talking about it. And I think they're going to call this a turnover and a takeaway for this defense. Fumble. Recovered by the defense in the end zone. Result of the play is a touchback. So Pratt fumbles it before he crosses the line and the mean green will take over it's all about creating turnovers the mean green do a tremendous job of making sure they attack the ball they attack the quarterback he rides that wave and then a couple guys get in there just rip the ball i don't see it cross or touch that plane for a touchdown mean green look like they're in business Back here at Yeoman Stadium in the call on the field of a fumble stands. Number 21, Kevin Wood with the right hand in there, strips at the football of Michael Pratt. That ball's coming loose. It is a fumble. North Texas football. So they take over at the, their own 20 after the touchback, and it's Isaiah Johnson out of the backfield, and a gain of 12 for the first down. That's a big, big play for the Mean Green to get back in flow offensively, but the defense have been under duress making a play. Rodgers fires to Damon Ward out across the 35. Now gain five there. We haven't called Jamori Macklin's name yet. He's been the big play wide receiver, number nine. At some point, does the Mean Green offense try to find ways to get him the football? He's the big play guy. First two seasons, he's averaged 24 yards per catch. This is Roderick Burns, the guy that is closing in on the 2,000-yard receiving mark for the senior out of Houston, Texas, for his career, and he's got the first down again there. Yeah, Beth, one of those former walk-ons, guy who had to earn his keep, only 5'9", 190, but has been a major force for this offense. Mean Green are three and three. They're one and one their first year in the American Athletic Conference after 10 seasons in Conference USA. Rogers on the move. He'll get shoved out of bounds. This is, this is a big uh, stretch for them. The, the new guys didn't get a break from the schedule. Their next four <laughs> games are absolutely brutal. And in fact, at three wins, of course, yes. you've got to get to six to get to that bowl eligibility. It's going to be tough to find three wins the second half of the season unless they can take down one of these big guys coming up. Yeah, you mentioned it right now, Tulane, and you got Memphis, UTSA at SMU. Tough road, tough stretch. Rodgers thumped 
at the 46-yard line. He picks up four more, hit by Jared Small, the grad student out of Baton Rouge. That's, that's not a bad play. I know it was a big hit, but it sets you up into third and six, and it gives you a manageable third down that if it's not there originally, if that offensive line breaks down, Rodgers can take off and pick up a first down. Five wide on third and six. Four-man rush. And the pass will come up short of the line to gain. It's out to midfield, a gain of four, and it's fourth down and two. They've already gone for it and failed to get it once, right around the same spot. Look, you applaud the effort of Roderick Burns, who made the catch, but he's got to realize that he's got to go north and south. As soon as he makes the catch, go north and south, get extra yards. He tried to go back a little bit, and he actually lost yardage. So this is a longer fourth down opportunity then maybe if he went north, and could have got it to fourth and one or fourth and short. Macklin's the guy down the bottom of the screen. Looking his way, and he's got it. Down to the 42-yard line of Tulane. Their go-to guy comes through in a game of eight. Yeah, I've been waiting for it. Took him long enough, but they finally got it to Macklin. 5'11", 183. He's a big play wide receiver ready to happen. You get one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. I think that's the advantage that North Texas has to take at, advantage of. Look at this lineup. Look at how spread out the O-line is. QB draw. Huge gaps between the offensive linemen. They'll sling it out to the edge, and it's almost intercepted. Cam Podesclu was the closest guy there. Because he wasn't fooled. He was like, okay, you are doing all this. It's a lot of smoke and mirrors. All he did was read the screenplay and went and made a play. That's a nice job by Cam Podesclu. He's one of those newcomers to the secondary for Tulane. Meanwhile, Mike Leach smiling down from above on one of his guys, Eric Morris. He'd love the shenanigans. <laughs> Second down and 10 here. Rodgers flushed, dumps it down, and another big stick at the 46-yard line. Isaiah Johnson got his feet knocked out from under him, and he is slow to get up. A loss of four, that was Tyler Grubbs. Tyler Grubbs putting the thump. He's a transfer from Louisiana Tech. He's actually starting in place of Corey Platt, Corey Platt Jr., who was a starter next to Machado to start the season. With Platt being out, Grubbs has got a lot of play and starting to pick it up now as he and Machado forming a nice little tandem at the linebacker spot. Closing seconds of this first quarter, a third down coming up, and the injury to Isaiah Johnson. Johnson's one of the more bigger backs at 210 pounds. We've talked about this three-headed monster at running back with Adeyi. Johnson, we just mentioned, and Attaway. They're already down. Ikaika Ragsdale. Oh, got the leg caught underneath him on the turf. And he will be assisted over to the side. By the athletic training staff. So let's see who comes out here at tailback now on a third down and 15. It's a day. Have not converted a third down, 0 for 3 here in the first quarter. Number six, Darius Hodges to the bottom of the screen. Play action. Defensive line shoving the O-line right into the quarterback, so Rodgers will run with it and gets down inside the 40, and it's fourth down in decision time. Gain of eight there. Look, North Texas, I think, got away with a hold. Oh, that's number six, Derry Hodges, on the left side of the screen. He comes in, and he just bulldozes right in there. And that's the end of the first quarter, but an outstanding job by Hodges pressing the pocket, forcing Rodgers to the outside. Will they or won't they with a fourth down coming up? Seven nothing two lane. Welcome back to ESPN College Football presented by Boost Infinite. 
And welcome back to another uh, fourth down opportunity here for North Texas. They will keep their kicker on the sideline and go with their quarterback, Chandler Rogers. And I'm not surprised by this decision earlier this week. Eric Morris talked about it. Field goals won't cut it against these guys. So he realizes we've got to score points. We need touchdowns, not field goals against Tulane. Already their third chance of the day. They're one for two. And looking at a fourth down and six. QB draw. Eight guys drop into coverage, and it's incomplete, and they will turn it over. So after they get the turnover on their own goal line to prevent a two-lane touchdown, they can't turn it into points. Yeah, and I think that's a frustrated coach because he's saying there's two guys in that area who you're throwing to. And so Macklin's turn around saying, were you throwing that to me or were you throwing that to number 15, Jordan Smart? Hey, tonight, number 16, Duke, and its dominating defense will try and slow down Keon Coleman and number four, Florida State. Our coverage begins at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific on ABC and the ESPN app. Can the Knowles keep the streak alive? They have never lost to Duke. They're 21 and 0. Never lost. And hopefully from the fan perspective, we get a little Jordan Travis versus Riley yes. Leonard tonight. I know Leonard looks like a game time decision at quarterback for Duke. Pratt comes out swinging. He's the guy that fumbled at the goal line the last time they had the football, and here he connects for 22 yards to Chris Brazel. Yeah, he's the other redshirt freshman. Missed last year with a shoulder injury, but man, he has contributed so much so far this season. Sort of a breakout game last week versus Memphis. Had some contested catches. And there's a lot of trust between his quarterback, or he and his quarterback, Michael Pratt. Yeah, career high, 103 yards on three catches a week ago. Huge win for them over Memphis as they run with Makai Hughes. They are the prohibitive favorites to win the American Athletic with uh, SMU and Memphis also in the mix in terms of the preseason poll. Of course, the top uh, three of the top teams left the conference to join the Big 12 this year. So a lot of folks thought it was Tulane and then everybody else kind of in the race this year. Under the direction of Willie Fritz, the Dodd Trophy National Coach of the Year winner a season ago, got him back into the national rankings for the first time in a quarter of a century. And they return to the top 25 this week after that big Memphis win as Makai Hughes gets him about a foot short of the line to game. I just love this matchup. We've talked about Sincere Hainsworth, the center. He's just pushing guys around up front, getting and getting yards for his running back. Hughes tries to get to the outside, and he's going to be short. And now it's fourth down for Tulane. Jordan Brown with a big stop. And this is still go for it here. I don't see uh, they bring in the big boys, a couple of extra tight ends to come in for Tulane. This is a big point in this game right here. Three tight end set. And they'll try another, uh, what is it, Crescent City? The Crescent City Press. There you there go for is. a first down. Yes. Behind Alex Bauman, he's the presser. There it is, the CCP, <laughs> Crescent City Press. And once you see Michael Pratt go under center, that's a big indicator defensively. You've got to make sure those gaps are covered. And just watch Michael Pratt. He's just finding the open gap. Where's the opening? And that's what he does. He gets under center, finds the opening. Again, I talked about it earlier. 6'3", 220. Doesn't need much to lean forward and pick up a first down. Hughes, left side. Look at him carrying a defender with him all the way down to the 22-yard line. Gain a seven there. Yeah, I'm just watching the offensive line go to work, Beth. This offensive line for Tulane is playing on the opposite side. They're, they're getting great push up front, and they're getting an opening up lane for Makai Hughes. He's able to pick where he wants to go. Shout out to those guys up front getting some good push. Cameron Wire, Shadre Hurst, Sincere Hainsworth, Josh Remetic, Rashad Green, the Biggins. Don't forget the tight ends. They're, they're helping out too, Beth. Yeah, bobby has got the uh, touchdown catch yeah, sure. as well as uh, two of the Crescent City presses. 
Need some coffee <laughs> and some beignets. Hughes met in the backfield and taken down by Carson Kropp. That's a nice job, just fitting it up. And it's a third down now, third and three for Tulane. We saw Brazel earlier, he had a catch. This is one of those opportunities where you try to spread the defense a little bit out. Find your matchup. Where is that matchup for Tulane? Hughes already has run for 61 yards. Pratt through the air is five of six for 58 yards here in the first half. They'll roll out Michael. Incomplete, broken up and almost picked by Logan Wilson. He's made some nice plays in the secondary. And now it's fourth down and three. That should have been an interception. Logan Wilson was all over. He knew the route. I was expecting the same thing. Number six, Lawrence Keyes was in the slot. He's the fifth year senior who you trust on third down. And Logan Wilson undercut this route. And there's a reason why Logan Wilson plays defensive back. Receiver would have caught that one. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like they're gonna go on fourth and three. Just on the edge of the red zone. Three-man rush is picked up. Pratt will try and run for it, and he's hauled down. Jordan Brown met him as Pratt went airborne. And a fourth down stop for the mean green, and they'll get the ball back. Back here at Yulman Stadium and an outstanding job on the last play by Jordan Brown, the linebacker for North Texas. He's going to make two plays here in one. That's right, because they're trying to get the ball to number five, Yul Keith Brown. He's at the bottom. But Jordan Brown, the linebacker, he stays in his coverage. He gets underneath Yul Keith Brown. Pratt has to get off of that play. And then Brown comes up and knocks Pratt for a loss. And they get off the field. Outstanding job by Jordan Brown making two plays in one. Oscar Attaway with the first down carry. So both sides have uh, had opportunities to consider field goals these last two possessions, Kirk, and both have uh, decided to go for it on fourth downs. There's a first down pass play out across the 40-yard line to Blair Conright in a gain of 14. Yeah, both teams have really stiffened up on fourth down. They found ways to just stay in the throwing lane. And then you hope your quarterback, if it's not there, can take off and run and get it. But that was a nice job by Brown retreating and getting Pratt before he could pick up a first. Surprised that Tulane didn't go for three there? Take the field goal? No, I, not, not really. I think that they're confident in their defense that they can continue to get the ball back. Rodgers will step up. And incomplete out of play. And... Oh, there did not appear to be anybody in the vicinity of that one. Yeah, he was trying to make a throw, but the rush of the green wave were right there in his face. That time it was DJ Douglas. Hodges was there at the end as well, and he couldn't step into that throw, Chandler Rogers. Remember, he's only six foot, 195 pounds, and he was trying to get that ball way deep down the field. One of the issues for North Texas here in this first half, they're just not getting the first down yardage they were hoping for. And behind the chains again, and the nice pick up there to Macklin. And that'll set them up with a third down and short. Yeah, but this is the critical third down because they're right again in this no man's land, Beth. They've got to get the first down and keep the chains moving because you don't want to have another big decision for your head coach, Eric Morris. You got to get this third down here to keep the chains moving and not have to go for it on fourth down because a back and forth of who's going to make the first the fourth down conversion first. 0 for 4 here in the first half so far on third down. Outstanding job by Devin Deal, number 90. He's at the top of the screen, and all he's going to do is just come straight down and make a play. 
We talked about these defensive ends and outside guys. Watch at the top of the screen, Devin Deal. He just comes and refuses to even be blocked. There's a blocker that flashes, but he goes straight for the running back. The angle by Deal is what was able, enabled him to go and make a play on that football. And then Patrick Jenkins, number zero, with the recovery. They will start out across midfield, and for the first time, Arnold Barnes is in at running back, and he'll get the carry, the cutback twice, and then he slips and tackled by the turf monster down at the 36-yard line. It's a first down run. Oh, that was a nice job on the backside. Rashad Green, the right tackle, he was able to cave down. He caved down that entire North Texas side, and he, the cutback by Barnes, the true freshman from right here in New Orleans, finds a little opening. Barnes will stay in there after Hughes had played every play up to that snap. He'll run it again, wrapped up in the backfield by Mason Richards, the senior out of Burleson, Texas, making his 33rd consecutive start today. You know, one thing that me and you talked about, Beth, was that Tulane, they're now the hunted, right? They're no longer the hunters, so they're going to get everyone's best. And I think you kind of get the flow of this game that this is an opportunity right here that Tulane's going to take the points. I think before it was like, hey, let's try to go for it on fourth down. They're just trying to get points here on this drive. Second and 10. Good blocking on the perimeter. And down to the 33-yard line for Shedro Lewis, the senior out of Florida. Jordan Brown with the stop, a gain of six, and it's third down at about five. Everybody involved, right? This is the equal opportunity offense. Everybody's getting a touch so far in this first half. Out of the pistol, they'll keep it on the ground. And another good cutback for a first down run by Lewis. They're getting fresh legs into the backfield. Yeah, but Carson Crop number 15, has got to make the play. Number 15, the linebacker, he's got a free run. He just chose the wrong hole. He went front side, and Lewis just went to the outside. So if you get the linebacker to make the right decision, that probably would be a tackle for loss. They scored on their first possession, Tulane did. They fumbled at the goal line on their second, stuffed on a fourth down play the last time they were down here. Pratt. We'll go with it inside the 15 as he sheds a would-be tackler and he's down to the 11. 14 yards on the scramble. Yeah, consistent, right? This is what consistency brings you. The same offensive coordinator for two years in a row for Michael Pratt is that if the play's not there, he's willing to just pull it down and get what you can. That's understanding of an offense, but that's also understanding of having a second year under his coordinator Slade Nagel, that if it's not there, just make something positive happen. Under six to go in the half. And it's back to Makai down to the 10 yard line. They can still pick up a first down around the two yard line. Jordan Brown with the tackle there. But this is where the, <laughs> look, we're in the red zone again. We've talked about it earlier. They converted one, then they had the turnover. Can they convert this red zone opportunity into a touchdown. Already 133 yards on the ground. Pratt has not thrown but six times so far today. Make it seven incomplete. Looking for Lawrence Keys in the back of the end zone. That's a misfire by Pratt. He had Keys in the back, but he's got to take a little velocity off of that one. He's not in the ninth inning of the, AL, what, the ALCS or the NLCS. He's not the closer. Take a little off of that one. You got to lead your receiver a little bit. If he leads keys, take a little off. That would have been a touchdown. Both sides will get some subs on. Third down and eight. Hughes offset Brazel to the top of your screen. North Texas showing pressure right over the center. Sincere Hainsworth. They'll run it with Hughes inside the five, down to the goal line. And in, touchdown, Tulane. They cash in the turnover. And Hughes caps it off with a 10-yard run.
That's just the muscle up front. This offensive line that has been together for a long time. That chemistry. Because when you have North Texas so tight in there, you're going to need somebody to have to fall off if the ball goes to the outside. That was a good job by 61. Cameron Wire, he's the left tackle. He was able to keep oh, everybody in that down. box, which allowed the movement to the outside for Hughes to get into the end zone. Well, now it looks like they will review whether or not Hughes got in for the score. Eight plays, 48 yards, three and a half minutes as it stands right now. And that was off of the fumble recovery at midfield. And while they take a look, we'll take a break. Back in a moment. So the ruling on the field was a touchdown, and it will stay that way for Makai Hughes, who's already rushed 12 times for 73 yards. And he did make it across the goal line to give Tulane the 13-0 lead. And can he do it again for a third game in a row, Kirk? A, a couple of weeks ago, right. a career high 123. Last week beat that with a buck 30 and now flirting with it again. Yeah, the identity of this offense is its running game. So I think this is something that they were excited about seeing that now Makai Hughes, the redshirt freshman, remember missed last year with a knee injury, is now the, uh, the lead dog, the lead back in the backfield. Valentino Ambrosio on for the PAT, and he's got it. So they convert the turnover into seven, and they've doubled their advantage. The playoff race is so wide open. Who's going to survive the gauntlet? College football playoff top 25, October 31st on ESPN. Kick off your NFL Sunday with the Countdown Crew, 10 Eastern on ESPN and the app. As Tulane has the lead over North Texas, 14 to nothing. Makai Hughes with a 10-yard run, and Michael Pratt, the two-yard touchdown pass to Alex Bauman. We talked about the story coming in, the mean green offense against the two-lane defense and the win so far for the two-lane defense. And of course, the NFL weekend gets underway tomorrow with your countdown crew at 10 Eastern. And then Monday Night Football features the Vikings hosting the 49ers at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific on ABC, ESPN, ESPN Deportes, and the Manning cast over on the Deuce. Yeah, I'm lucky enough to talk to uh, Kevin O'Connell, the head coach for the Minnesota Vikings on Tuesdays. And so we'll see what, uh, hopefully, I'm talking to a happy coach, <laughs> so maybe, because uh, that 49ers team came back down to earth a little bit. Yes, they lost did. to the Browns a week ago. Ball is on the turf again! And a scrum at the bottom of the pile. Is it two straight plays with a giveaway? No, they are saying it is mean green football. Uh, they're lucky on that one. They're able to get it back. Looked like Keith Cooper Jr. had an opportunity to grab that one. It's just the mesh point. The mesh point for the quarterback, Chandler Rogers, and Ayo Adeyi. Just off just a little bit. That ball's on the turf. Loss of four, second down and 14. The pass completed out across the 30 to Jamori Macklin. And it's third down. The one thing I'm seeing from Tulane defensively is they're blitzing the ball carrier. So when they get into that mesh, they blitz the ball carrier. And I think it's throwing off Rodgers. Rodgers, quick hitter to the outside for the first down to Roderick Burns. I mean, this is an offense that averages 35 points per game, scoreless so far in the first half. They've just finally crossed over the 100 total yard mark. They are averaging close to 500, so that speaks to how good the Tulane defense has been. Look at those numbers. So far for the green wave against the mean green. And Rodgers and company change that here in the final three and a half minutes. Yeah, this is a big drive for them. 
Hopefully they can keep the ball away from Tulane offensively. So they've got to go down, at least get points, try to run this thing all the way out and go in at the half because Tulane also gets the ball to start the second half. Oh, that's good. Grab by Katai, the tight end, and a flag uh, coming might be a roughing the passer penalty here. It's our first flag of the day. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, number six, 15-yard penalty, an automatic, first down. Well, we knew coming into the game, North Texas, one of the least penalized team in, in all of FBS. They play a pretty clean game. That time they got Hodges getting there a little bit too late. But very efficient with this North Texas football team offensively. Iowa Day is in the backfield with Rodgers. They'll switch it up. A day slipped and down he goes at the 45 yard line. No contact. We've seen a couple of guys sliding on the turf today. And it's always a little bit different when you're going sideways and you got to plant that foot. He's got to plant that right foot in the ground and go north and south. That time just didn't get the cleats in the ground. Watch the right foot. He's got to plant that right foot. He tried to cut off the inside foot. False start. Offense number and eight. Now they'll give Five some of the yardage penalty. back down. with the false start. That's a pre-snap penalty. You don't see many of those for North Texas. A couple weeks ago against Navy, they didn't have a penalty all game long. <laughs> uh, that's a flawless game. I think every coach would love to have a flawless game like that where no penalties. They do well with their pre-snap, even with the motions and all the movement and how quickly they go offensively. Not a lot of pre-snap penalties from North Texas. Yeah, they average 74 plays per game. They've only run 30 so far. Timeout. And they are uh, they are out of sorts right timeout. now. North Texas. 209 to go and a break in the action. On the AT&T Halftime Report with Kevin Connors and Sam Acho. Got the Ohio State Penn State highlights for you. Oklahoma survives. And uh, somebody's getting ready to light up the cigars, whether that's Tennessee or Alabama. More on that matchup coming up as they renew their rivalry this afternoon. Third Saturday in October. 14 to nothing, our score here. Tulane on top, North Texas on the move, out by midfield, and time for them to run their two-minute drill. And the pass is incomplete, looking for Jordan Smart. It was behind him. It's an offense that has put up some big numbers the last couple of weeks in particular, but uh, Tulane's defense has had them stymied thus far, yeah, third and long. They're not playing on their heels either. They brought six. They brought a little pressure, and now they back off. A little three-man rush up coming. Rodgers with time. Now we'll run with it. Needs some help to get there and will come up a few yards short. See where they mark him down to the 39-yard line. He needed the 36 for a first down. Lance Robinson was there with the tackle. Yeah, they call a timeout there. So you got a fourth down with the clock stop. They're one for three on fourth downs today. Well, they stopped the clock. I don't know why would they stop the clock on a third down play, but now the clock's moving. Another fourth down opportunity here. Does Tulane bring pressure? Oh, there's a lost helmet. That's why they stopped the clock. Does Tulane there? There's the timeout I was looking for. It's a big down here. Eric Second Morris. charge timeout. North Texas. Lost time 30 seconds. North Texas. So they will have one Game left. clock operator, please reset the game With clock to one minute, to go. 37 seconds. Their kicker, Noah Rauschenberg, uh, his long this season, 49 yards. We did see him popping from over 50 in pregame this afternoon. Yeah, I don't know if I want to risk a field goal right here. You missed that. You give a great opportunity for two lanes. Yeah, no, you need, some more, you need some more yardage before you consider that. You kind of want to bleed this clock a, half, a little bit, yeah. He's an option if you can get this fourth down. You want points. 
you definitely need points. Yeah, this Man, is a 57 yarder. At what cost? Do that. <laughs> so they go for it again here. Very rarely do you get this many opportunities, but this is, I want to say, is this the fifth, the fourth down opportunity? They're one for three. Yeah. Here we go. Rodgers. And it's bobbled and dropped. Kalen Horton had it for a first down and couldn't hold it. And Tulane will take over with a minute and a half and all three of their timeouts. That's just a drop by Kalen Horton. There's nothing else that you can say. The ball is delivered on time. I know it was in traffic, but Horton was thinking about going for. He already had the first down. All he's got to do is catch the ball and fall. He takes his his eyes off that football right as it touches his hands. Never secured the catch before trying to go upfield. And that's a drop and a missed opportunity for North Texas. So for the third time, they give it up on downs. And now a chance for Tulane to get some more points. Pratt. Deep ball. And it is intercepted. Picked off around the 18-yard line on what has been a bit of an off first half for Michael Pratt, who's now thrown an interception as well as fumbled on the goal line today. Phil Hill was the guy that got the pick. Yeah, this was just an opportunity to take a shot, right? You just had the turnover or the turnover on downs, and Michael Pratt just threw this ball up. He's hoping the one thing that you saw was that Yo Keith Brown didn't even locate the football. He was expecting that ball to be thrown more toward the sideline, and Michael Pratt threw that more toward the hash mark. And that was just a nice job of reading that play was Phil Hill who gets the interception. They had three INTs last week, so another week with another interception for North Texas. All right, so now can they do anything with a little under a minute and a half? Just the one timeout left, and they will lose yardage there on first down. Attaway hauled down by Keith Cooper. Does Tulane call a timeout to stop the clock? Yeah, they sure do. 30 seconds. And Willie Fritz, he runs down to that near linesman, and he signals timeout. Stormy? You know, for as odd of a game as this has been for North Texas's offense, we're used to it being much more high-flying, high-scoring. There's been no finger-pointing on that sideline throughout this first half, and Chandler Rogers at quarterback, not a big rah-rah type of a sideline guy as a leader, very cool, calm, poised, and they've just been trying to work things out. Eric Morris, between every drive, coming over and talking to him, talking through things, just trying to work out the kinks here. Maybe they just need to reset in the second half or try to pop something here in the last minute. Yeah, they, they just have had no run game really to try and compliment Rodgers. In fact, their two running backs have combined for zero rushing yards today. And they've lost Isaiah Johnson. I think now the mean green just want to force Tulane to call the timeouts. <laughs> Which they will call their second. Second charge timeout, two lane, 30 seconds. Game clock operator, please reset the game is, clock uh, to one minute. He's right there in front of the seconds. officials trying to get that timeout call, give him just a little opportunity, just have enough time to maybe steal some points before this half over. Hey, the next stop on the F1 schedule is the U.S. Grand Prix at the Circuit of the Americas in Austin, right. Texas, tomorrow at 3 Eastern, noon Pacific. Pre-race coverage begins at 1.30 on ABC and the ESPN app. So the U.S. Grand Prix from Austin, getting close to the big new uh, F1 race coming up in Vegas next yeah. month. Trust me, I hear it all the time. Oh, all the yeah. people upset about the grandstand in front of the Bellagio <laughs> Fountains. Get a grip, people. <laughs> Third down and 11 out of the empty set. They'll pass it underneath. And does that stop the clock out of bounds after a six-yard game? Yeah, that was out of bounds. That's what wow. you didn't need. And now you've got fourth down. I don't think North Texas realizes it's fourth down. They get out of bounds. That stops the clock. Saves Tulane a timeout. 
I, I believe that North Texas didn't realize what was going on there. Third I choice timeout, North Texas. Smart. 30 seconds. Jordan Smart, the junior, didn't realize he's supposed to stay in bounds on that one to keep the clock going and force Tulane to have to call a timeout. He gets out of bounds, so Tulane is going to have a set up yeah. a punt return and have well, one because now out. North Texas has to call a timeout. They right. did not appear to have their punting unit ready with 106 <laughs> to go. What's your experience here, Kirk, from the two lane standpoint? Do you like to send the house? Or you want to try and set up the return? No, I'm gonna set up the return. Okay. Just give my quarterback another opportunity. I would almost, if the return's not even there, just fair catch it. Yeah, fair save catch the it, clock. save the clock, save the time. They have had some punting issues, North Texas has had so far this season. It's Sawyer Evans, second punt of the day for him. And Jaquan Jackson back at his own 35-yard line. High, and the fair catch for Jackson at the 26. So uh, just under a minute to go. They've got one timeout left after the 49-yard punt. Talking about handling the middle eight, right? That's what Slade Nagel, the offensive coordinator for Tulane, has talked about. That middle eight, that final four minutes of the first half and that first four minutes of the second half. And this is where Tulane can really open this game up. They're able to get points right here going in the half and have an opportunity to score coming out of half. They can put the game away yeah. in these next two drives. Big two, I think, for the confidence a bit here of Michael Pratt, who's had a couple of turnovers here in the first half, including on his last throw with the interception. He's on the move, got some green grass in front of him, and he'll take a chunk of it. Runs for about six, give him five. Gets out of bounds, 50 seconds to go. Yeah, but I trust Michael Pratt in this situation though, right? Four-year starter, Yep. under a minute to go, knows what the clock is at, he's still got the timeout at his disposal. If it's not there, get out of bounds, throw the ball away. Preserve the timeout, but more importantly, try to preserve the clock when you can. Pratt, good time, finds his man at midfield. Chris Brazel breaks a tackle and picks up another 10 yards down to the 40-yard line, and the clock stops at 41 seconds. Nice job by Brazel, but a redshirt freshman mistake. He makes the catch and doesn't get out of bounds. I know the clock stops, but he could get out of bounds and preserve yep. even more of that clock. Uh, a miscommunication. Pratt thought his man was going deep. Lawrence Keyes cut the route off. Second and 10 with 31 seconds to go. Yeah, you get the redshirt freshman Brazel. He makes a nice play, turns it upfield, but he's got to get out of bounds. That will stop the clock. I know we're under two minute and the clock stops regardless of a first down to reset the chains, but that's an opportunity that was missed right there that they could have slowed down just a little bit and set up. So you see the rush of the play, and that's probably why we saw that errant throw from Pratt to not sure who the right receiver was. The keys just off on that one because of the having to rush. They're going to run it on second down and 10, and it's a big burst. And Makai Hughes can get out of bounds inside the 25. Sincere Hainsworth, the center, leading the way. The big fella helps Hughes get 17 yards. Yeah, just 52 right in the middle, just knocking guys back. He's like a pinball. He's just bopping, booming, booming, putting hands on everybody. He's the security guard. He's the bouncer of this offensive line, and he's throwing guys out the club. They're not going with the wristbands, by the way. Look, they're all looking down. They've got them in their uh, in the front on the bellies there. Mm -hmm. Little fanny packs with the play calls. Three guys coming. Pratt, as he's hit, gets the release into the end zone. Touchdown! Lawrence Keys hauls it in. 23-yard touchdown catch. Second of the day for Michael Pratt. A couple words to describe Michael Pratt from his head coach. Stable and consistent. 
It's a quarterback who knows he's, knows he's going to take a shot as he throws it, but he stands in there long enough, and he puts that one right in the bucket. That's a nice throw from Michael Pratt to Lawrence Keyes right at the end of the half for a touchdown. Valentino Ambrosio with the extra point to cap off the five-play, 73-yard drive in 41 seconds. Hey, this season for every field goal, an extra point made by participating universities. Allstate will make a contribution to the university's general scholarship fund. Thank you, Allstate. Just the old school concept, right? The smash seven. It's the outside receiver runs a stop route that draws the corner up. And then you got one on one with keys and a safety. And Michael Pratt put the football right where his guy can make the play. That's an outstanding throw. And they made it look easy, right? That little last drive, they made it look easy. They didn't even have to use the yeah. timeout, Beth. No, didn't need it. Just the one little oops where the re one receiver didn't get out of bounds, but everybody else, when they got close to the sideline, they worked that clock beautifully. And Pratt, after a couple of turnovers, finishes the half strong. Out to the 25, so Michael Pratt, the four-year starter, uh, Mel Kuyper thinks he is the, probably the 10th best quarterback in the draft and a shot at the NFL. Yeah, it's hard not to see him in the National Football League, a four-year starter, and just knows where to go with the football. Can use his legs. We know about his arm, the poise that he plays with. He's just got a natural skill set, right? It's a great feel of the game. And then always knowing where to go with the football and connecting for the touchdown to Lawrence Keyes right before the half. That's just a perfectly delivered football by Michael Pratt. 109 yards passing, 36 yards rushing, and uh, that should take care of the first half with uh, Tulane set to get the kickoff to open up the second half and a 21 to nothing lead as we send you back to the studio. Welcome back to ESPN College Football, presented by Boost Infinite. And welcome back to the American Athletic Conference on ESPN. Beautiful day here in New Orleans and a terrific start uh, for the green wave of Tulane. 21 to nothing. The lead over North Texas as they try and keep pace atop the standings in the AAC. Beth Mowens, Kirk Morrison, Stormy Bonatoni. We talked coming in, Kirk, about how this would be the mean green offense against the green wave defense and right. a big win for Tulane in that first half. Yeah, advantage green wave defense. They're the one that are, they are stealing the show today. It's been all about Shield Wood, their defensive coordinator, and what this Tulane's defense has been able to do. First of all, they've got the goose egg up on the board meaning they've had three fourth, fourth down stops, one takeaway. They've held one of the high octane offenses in college football to only 128 total yards. It's been ongoing and onslaught by this defense the entire first half, looking to keep it going in the second. And on the offensive side, after a slower start, Michael Pratt and the O got things going. They uh, scored in under a minute in that last possession to close out the first half. They'll get it to start the third quarter as well. Two touchdown passes for Michael, a couple of turnovers, and good support in the run game from Makai Hughes, who got things done on the ground. He's already close to 100 yards rushing. Yeah, it, look. Only seven completions, but it's what he did. I thought the end of the half really stood out to me going down with under a minute left, scoring that pass, I mean, that throw to Lawrence Keyes for a touchdown. Uh, they're able to get points here, be a big boost, and they can really open this game up. And a flag pre-snap movement on the oh, Tulane side. Let's send it down to Stormy Bonatoni. 
first down. Yeah, and Beth and Kirk, that's exactly what Willie Fritz talked to me about at the break as well. He just said that after an up and down half for Michael Pratt, he thinks that last drive was executed to perfection in the two minute drill. He said that's going to give him that much more confidence moving forward here in the second half defensively as well. He said he loves what he has seen from his group, keeping North Texas in first and second and third and long and everything that they've done to make those fourth down stops. Well, Stormy, he'll go with Arnold Barnes, the freshman from New Orleans, to open up this third quarter at tailback. Of course, last year it was the Tajay Spears show. Now he's alongside King Henry doing his, <laughs> doing his work on Sundays. Uh, but a nice compliment of backs to follow in his footsteps after his big season a year ago. Yeah, we just saw Barnes. Look, Makai Hughes has really been the guy over the last couple weeks, really, who's kind of took on this league of the American by storm, one of the outstanding rushers. Now we run it with Barnes, and he'll pick up uh, another couple out to the 30-yard line. So a third down at about five. June Vilea, the sophomore from Oakland, California, with the stop. And we've got a player down for the mean green. Well, it's Ethan, uh, Ethan Wislowski. You know, the one thing I've loved about that first half as well, honestly, is the offensive line for Tulane. I know we talked about the defense. We've talked about Michael Pratt. We've talked about Makai Hughes. But since they're Hainsworth, Shadre Hurst, Cameron Wire, Remitich, Green, they really opened up some lanes and really helped out. There was no sacks also given up as well, giving their quarterback time. And then you got the smart quarterback who was able to take off if the pocket collapsed. Yeah, that offensive line has been something else. So now back to Makai Hughes at tailback. There's that group up front. Four for seven today on third downs. The bubble screen and they won't get it. Well covered by North Texas. Yo Keith Brown with the catch, but it's fourth down. A great pursuit. That's all that was. That was pursuit by North Texas. You see the ball, and it's who's going to meet me at the ball carrier first. That was a nice job there. It looked like Jalen Smith was one of the first guys to get there for North Texas, and that's a great start. That's a three and out for North Texas defensively. Getting the ball back to your offense. Definitely probably some words that they got from their head coach, Eric Morris, at halftime. They got to play with a little more like the hair's on fire. Well, Carroll on to punt. And it is an absolute blast. Burns all the way back close to his 10-yard line. He had to backpedal about 20 yards. On a big kick from Will Carroll, 54 yards the distance there. And that's where North Texas will take over for the first time with Chandler Rogers. 187 consecutive pass attempts without an interception. He's 15 for 23, 90 yards through the first half of play. But no big plays at all. They got to press the ball down the field if they want to have any success in this half. They'll run it up the middle for about a dozen. Oscar Attaway with a first down. Their biggest pickup of the first half was a 15 yard personal foul penalty. Well, this is a good start right here. Just getting a nice little give, nice blocking up front. And nice job by Attaway getting downhill. He's the downhill runner. Five Rogers, yet yeah, as he releases incomplete out of bounds. Everybody was coming, led by Devin Deal. Yeah, this is, we talked about earlier in the game, these tackles, they're going to have to be great. They're going to have to, I always call it the big sombrero. They've got the big job of trying to protect their quarterback. And if you don't do that, you'll get a face full of number 90, Devin Deal, earlier, who already had a turnover. Second down and 10. Rogers, play action. Deep ball, a lot of contact downfield, and the catch is made by Roderick Burns down to the 35-yard line as he... Fought off the defensive back, D.J. Douglas. 
And a gain of 47. Yeah, nice job by Burns. That pocket was collapsing. Watch the right side of that offensive line. Just ran through. David, Devin Deal almost got there, but a terrific throw to Burns. One of those big play wide receivers getting an opportunity. I just said they got to get the ball down the field. Their biggest nice play of the game. Rodgers misfires to Burns, who tried to turn and run with it before he had it. Oh, that's one of those layups, right? Those were those free throws. Make the routine play. That's a routine play. Sometimes guys will make the spectacular play, but then what gets you behind the change is just a routine play like that that would have got positive yards on first down. They'll go five wide again. Bunch four of them to the left side. Landon Sides is the motion man. Rogers looking his way and he's got him. Down inside the 30. Nice little routine, the third down. It's a big down here. We saw Tulane defensively. They were able to get off the field on third downs. But I think with the ball this deep into Tulane territory, two down territory for sure for North Texas. Third down and three. You haven't called Jamori Macklin. He's at the bottom of the screen. Rogers, the underneath route inside the 25 and a first down to Damon Ward. Good job on the underneath mesh route. You had Ward coming all the way from the top, coming all the way underneath, and A.J. Hampton, number 11, had him in coverage. Going to the tempo offense here. Rodgers, the quick toss, back shoulder to Macklin, and he's got it. And for the first time today, the main green are in the red zone. Been calling for him, right? I've been calling for Jamori Macklin. He's the big play guy, number nine on the outside. I get one-on-one -on -one if I'm Chandler Rodgers. That's where I'm attacking. First and goal for North Texas. From the seven. Macklin, probably best that he didn't hold on to that. They would have lost yardage. Yeah, that's the same thing I said. He probably should have dropped it on purpose because they were trying to get the stutter, right? They were trying to fake the screen to Macklin, but the two lane defense did not bite. They stood back and they didn't allow that throw into the end zone. So nice job of defense by Tulane. Second down and goal. Showing pressure off the right side. They uh, showed their hand. So That's, the mean green will adjust. You still got one-on-one -on -one at the bottom though. Right, Macklin on Hampton. Rogers looking for his guy and he's got him. On the slant touchdown, Jamari Macklin. And points on the board after the best drive of the day for North Texas. I mean, that's the matchup I wanted. If I'm a quarterback, I'm saying I've got my big play receiver, Jamori Macklin, one-on-one -on -one with a backup cornerback. That was too easy. He sold the outside, came to the inside, and there was nobody, nobody from Tulane's defense in the middle of the field. A terrific throw and a big catch for another touchdown for Jamori Macklin, his ninth of the season. Chandler Rogers goes five for eight, 77 yards on that scoring drive. Caps it off with the seven yard pass. They went into halftime and had to regroup. Coach Eric Morris talked about it. It's beauty in the struggle, but well, the beauty was a touchdown. One to seven, Tulane with the lead over North Texas at the uh, St. Louis Cathedral downtown. And we are over at Yeoman Stadium, home of the Green Wave at five and one. A win today gets them bowl eligible. Uh, but it's uh, the mean green right now with a little bit of momentum. Their defense got them a stop. Their offense gets their first touchdown of the day. And now things are a little more interesting on this homecoming weekend. Don't forget, we got plenty more to come tonight. 
with Duke and Florida State. That's the featured matchup on ABC at 7.30 Eastern. And uh, big one for the undefeated Seminoles. They come in fourth in the country in the AP poll. Will they be top four in a couple of weeks on Halloween night with our first playoff reveal? And their stud quarterback, Jordan Travis. Yeah, Jordan Travis. Should start. We should start talking more about the Heisman for Jordan Travis, especially if these Seminoles continue to win. Remember Riley Leonard for Duke. Game time decision tonight for that matchup. Michael Pratt thought about the throw, and now will slide out across the 30-yard line. It's a big drive here for Tulane, right? A lot of things went their way in the first half, but you know, three and out to start the second half is one in which you don't want to see. But tonight, defense versus offense. Kind of similar to Ooh. today's game between <laughs> Tulane and North Texas, but look at that. Points per game. 42 defense. plus for Florida State That's offensively. A lot. Big test against that Duke defense yeah. tonight on ABC. I'll be watching that. And the Mean Green are looking a little meaner. Going to be a third down situation here. Jordan Brown, June Vilea. First couple of guys there, so a third and two. Trying to get their offense the ball back. Haven't been in a situation much for Tulane. Well, if there's a guy you trust on third and two, if the whole playbook's open. And if it's not there on that first initial progression, look for Michael Pratt to take off. Pratt will keep, and it's going to be close. The spot looks a bit short. I think he's short. Inside the 35, and that's where they needed to get to. Roderick Brown with the tackle. It's fourth down. They're on the ball. I don't know what ESPN Analytics says, but I probably wouldn't do this. Oof. They're going to go. They got just and they'll get it. <laughs> I guess forget analytics. <laughs> forget analytics. That's... At home, feeling confident. The Crescent City Press is what I call it. They've been successful with that play. Now their third opportunity in running it. But you've got to have a lot of trust in your quarterback, if you're Willie Fritz, to call that on your side. Gutsy play. So now they're two for three on fourth down. North Texas one for four today. We've had more fourth downs and uh, go for it than punts. I think you're this just afternoon. you're also feeling that this is an important drive, like I mentioned. You need to score some points and answer that score of North Texas. Makai Hughes turns the corner out close to midfield. They'll spot him at the 49. And that'll move the chains for 13 yards. And I think that'll get him over the century mark for the afternoon. Beth, go back to your identity. All right? That's probably what Willie Fritz is saying. Just go back to our identity, who we are. Running the football. This offense is predicated on running the football. Yeah, we missed out on a couple third down opportunities, but running the football is what opens up the big plays later in the game. Third game in a row for Makai now with over a hunch. He's got 105 on 15 carries. And a touchdown. Play action, Pratt looking deep. He'll check it down to the second man. And that's Lawrence Keyes down close to the 30 yard line. And another big play for Tulane. Yeah, it's levels to this, right? Levels to this route combination. You've got the deep receiver, it's taken away. So you go to the intermediate receiver, and that's where Pratt really locks in, which was keys. He had three different guys to throw to. He found the middle guy, or the middle level, which was Lawrence Keys for the big first down. Keys third catch for 51 yards today and a score. He had the touchdown catch right before the end of the first half as Arnold Barnes carries for a few. Let's see, are they just shy of 200 yards rushing now for the day? 199. Nope, 202. So that pushes them over the 200 yard rushing mark. Second and seven. Those cool helmets today, the, uh, with the bacon wave <laughs> on their lids. Popular back in the 1990s here. Out into the flat, your Keith Brown. 
Good effort by him, lunges for the line. He's gonna come up a yard short. Jordan Brown with another tackle. It's always beautiful to watch a quarterback go through his progressions because some quarterbacks will get greedy, right, Beth? They're wanting, wanting to go to progression number one. But this is where I talked about the experience of Michael Pratt. It's not there, and he just waits, and he finds his final outlet, his last progression, that gets him to an opportunity to get to a third and two. Two tight end set. They'll run for it, and they'll get it with Arnold Barnes. Here you see a look at the new design. This is the Buddy Tevens Remembrance Game. The uh, longtime Dartmouth head coach who passed away in December was the head coach here at Tulane from 1992 to 1996. You see the Buddy name on the back of the helmet. Five Ivy League titles while at Dartmouth. And he was one of the guys here at Tulane that laid the foundation for their unbeaten team in the late 90s. The throw! Bowman, touchdown, and one for Buddy from 21 yards out. Second touchdown catch for Alex today. Watch the quarterback. Keep your eyes on the quarterback. When you know you're going to take a shot, you got to hang in there. And that's what Michael Pratt does. He hangs in, knowing he's going to take a shot, but he knows where his tight end's going to be. The quarterback, he's, he felt that last one, but he delivered a strike to Bauman, who bounced off a couple guys and did the rest. Third TD pass of the day for Michael Pratt. And Tulane answers with a score of their own. Uh, you said it, Beth. They answered. The question was, what would they do on the drive after the Mean Green scored? The answer was Bauman with a touchdown. All season long, student sections across the country are competing to be the Taco Bell Live My Student Section of the Year. Download the Taco Bell app to learn more. Well, they've had plenty to cheer about so far here this afternoon, 28 to seven, Tulane trying to get to six and one, get to bowl eligibility behind Michael Pratt. Had a couple of turnovers early on, has settled down nicely, and now three touchdown passes. He's also run for 45 yards, showing his stuff. Yeah, he's stretching that arm out a little bit. He took a shot on that last one, that last touchdown throw. But well, his health is imperative. This absolutely. is the first time that he's been healthy since the season opener. And that's where the mean green We'll give it a go, down 28 to seven. Can the Tulane Green Wave match what a couple of others have done for the group of five teams? Going to New York six, uh, uh, New Year's Six Bowls back to back, UCF has done it. So has Cincinnati, of course. The Bearcats reached the playoff a couple of years ago. And last year for Tulane, a win in the Cotton Bowl in dramatic fashion against USC. Here's a look at their remaining schedule. And as you can see, prohibitive favorites to win out. The pass here to Oscar Attaway on first down for North Texas. They would need some help in all likelihood because Air Force continues to win. They are ranked above Tulane in the AP poll. Will they stay there when the CFP playoff rankings first come out on Halloween night? Of course, they still have to contend with North Texas here this afternoon. And a big gainer down to the 25 for Blair Conright. Yeah, nice job there by Blair Conright. He finds a hole inside that Tulane defense. And Chandler Rogers is able to just diagnose the play keep his eyes downfield, and that's a nice throw from the quarterback to lead Conright into the open field. Rodgers chased, completes the pass inside the 20. This is back-to-back -back drives now for North Texas. They've had a pass play of over 40 yards. So some bigger chunks here in the third quarter. 
That one to Trey Cleveland, the out route for six. I just love looking at the North Texas sideline with these signs they keep holding up. I see Atlanta <laughs> Falcons signs. I'm seeing the crowns. It's the way they signal these plays in. Look, I don't want to start an investigation like they're doing at Michigan right now for That's the side cheetah. watching. That's the cheetah out there right now. It's, it's funny watching these play calls come in from the sideline. Big hole off the left side, inside the five, and the bounce into the end zone. Io Adei from 18 yards out, and the mean green respond right back. Watch the left side, it's the linebacker, Machado. He comes inside and it leaves a void, which Adeyi finds his way into the end zone. That was just a misfit by Jesus Machado. And when you misfit, it opens up a lane and Adeyi, Mr. Explosive, that's what his coaches say, Mr. Explosive races to the end zone. Totally different offense for the Mean Green here in the third quarter. 75 yards in four plays and a minute and a half. I think that's what we expected from the beginning of the game. It just took them a while. It took them to go in at halftime and figure out, hey, what are we doing wrong here? And what they're doing is they're just finding guys in the middle of the field. They're leading guys down the field. That last drive was started off with a nice little throw, a positive gain to add away to start the drive. And I thought it was the next throw from Rodgers, where he was able to get Conright in the middle of the field and turn it into a big play. And then when you get down close to the end zone, Adeyi, the explosive running back, 5'7", 192, showing off the speed. A little bumper cars there at the end, but another touchdown for a day. So the last two drives, 13 plays, 163 yards. And more yards than they had the entire first half. They'll try the onside kick. They've got a shot at it, and they will get it. Jalen Smith with the recovery, and North Texas gets the ball right back. Perfect timing. Perfect timing. That ball traveled the 10 yards that was needed. And I think that's what the officials right now are talking about. They're huddled up right there, right around the 50 yard line. They're talking to see if that ball traveled 10 yards. That ball traveled 10 yards. There was no blocking or touching anything involved by the mean green. Really that's a well field. executed. The kick was recovered by the kicking team. First onside down, kick. North Texas. Wow, that's close. 14 was the first guy to touch it. Almost right at the 45-yard line, Javen Anderson. That's a terrific job by Anderson. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to three minutes, four seconds. So you had Javen Anderson with the touch, and then Jalen Smith with the recovery, and perfect right on time. Eric Morris, the head coach. Recovery by the kicking team is under further review. I think this will be a quick review. I think just wanted to make sure, do your homework. They're gonna just take another look. I thought the ball was, had traveled 10 yards, well executed onside kick by North Texas. I think this will be a speedy review. I didn't see any illegal contact either. You, know, you can't block anybody before. I think what really helps this play, possession. what really helps this play, Beth, is that Tulane retreated. They had so much space. Look at where the ball, is there's nobody from Tulane there in that yep. area. So you're really looking at the ball just to see if it gets to that 45 yard line and his body is right there on That's the 45. That's it, that's all you need right there. One look, go. That's it. Just well executed, Mean well green ball. That's just a terrific job, that was First of all, surprise on side. Mm -hmm. This is why coaches always say keep your head in the game. And they were able to pull that one off. Well, you, you touched on it earlier in the day. You know, the, the struggle that it was early in the season for North Texas and Eric Morris. They had to suspend some folks. They had to dismiss some folks. Mm -hmm. You know, we talked about his mentor, Mike Leach, who was all about discipline and leadership. But I thought the best line was, Mike always was able to find the tough guys yes, that would fight through it for you 
and they have started to find the tough guys that they want with them on this journey. Their first year under a head coach. The field stands. First down, North Texas. And their first year in the AAC, and now they are trying to rally from the deficit to get to within one score. Yeah, that's a nice job there. Special teams coach Drew Svoboda, his first year with the Mean Green, spent the previous two years at Alabama on that staff. So you always got to have something in your back pocket. And that was a play they brought out. Definitely caught Tulane by surprise. And now the pressure on the Tulane defense. They have not stopped this attack the last two possessions. And there's going to be a defensive interference penalty on the play. And actually, there's another flag back near the line Holding. of scrimmage. Defense number 25, 10-yard penalty, and an automatic first down. So that's on Rayshon Pleasant. You know, Pleasant, he's got a tall task of trying to guard Jamori Macklin. And it's right off the line of scrimmage. Macklin, he's just getting downfield. And well, this is interesting, too, because he's not on the two deep. So he's at least three <laughs> deep. And a big responsibility, incomplete looking for Damon Ward on first down. Yeah, they're about two or three defensive backs deep. You mentioned it, Beth Pleasant. He's a redshirt freshman from Monroe High School in Louisiana. This is going to be tough because they're looking for the matchup, whoever is on Macklin. Ward stays on his feet, picks up a couple more. Under three minutes to go here in the third, and a big quarter for North Texas. Trying to spoil the homecoming this afternoon. Third and four. A day E. Good second effort. And the charge forward for the first down. He ran out of the tackle of Patrick Jenkins, number zero, the big guy in the middle. Got the good swim. He thought he had a day wrapped up, but a day Remember, we talked about his size, 5'7, 192, and the explosive, keeping the legs moving, keeping those legs churning, the will to find a way for the first down. Tulane defense has been out there a long time in this third quarter, under two minutes to go. Sides gets the corner and inside the 25. Picks up nine more. I love this caveat play because remember all game long, the ends were doing what? Crashing down on the running backs, but they brought a receiver this time, which was Sides, who went the opposite way, which threw off the timing for that defensive front that was expecting a running back to get the ball. That time it was Sides, the receiver. Second down. A lot of room on the outside. Ward slips a tackle. Down to about the 12-yard line. They are uh, giving these receivers a wide berth on the edges, and North Texas taking advantage. 13 yards there. Well, I talked about it at the beginning of the game. Remember, lifeguards. That means that that front seven, linebackers, defensive front, they're going to have to help out that secondary. Right now, Rayshon Pleasant, the redshirt freshman, playing so far off, they bring the starters back in. Looking to the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Ward. Lance Robinson had the coverage. Tulane has a lot of depth on their team, offensively and defensively, so we see a lot of rotating. Now they get down deep here. I just saw the rotation go back, so the starters are back in in that secondary. 11, A.J. Hampton at one corner, and then also number seven, Lance Robinson, who just made that play. Not giving up a touchdown. Empty set, five receivers. Down to the two. Ball popped out, squirted into the end zone. And the officials still no word. They're I think that's a fumble. They're gonna they're gonna come together and talk about it, whether it was a fumble or was the receiver down. No, I didn't see a body part down. I believe that, that ball was fumbled, or was that right elbow? That's what I'm gonna look at is the right elbow, but it looks like 
It's Jordan Smart is the receiver. Rolling on the field is a fumble. Recovered by the defense in the end zone. It's a touchback. Despaney. Oh, boy. As he was trying to transition the football into the other hand to extend, I think the ball is coming loose. And that's probably, I think, it's going to be a fumble. Rolling on the field is under further review. Usually you see when somebody reaches, yes. the ball slams into the turf and the turf knocks it loose, but that appeared to be on an exchange from one hand Correct. to the other. At first look, I said, okay, maybe the ground caused that fumble, but when he turned over, there was not a body part, whether it's his lower end, a knee, an elbow, nothing had touched the ground, but as he tries to switch the ball to his other hand, now that, that angle looks like the shoulder does hit first. Yes, with, and he maintains control. Yep. That's what you have to look at. Does he maintain control? I thought he maintained control. So that was a catch first, and then I believe he maintained control when he was trying to extend the ball. So I think he will be down. That last look that we yeah, saw. Yeah, that last look is the best look. Yeah, he had the body part look to be down with firm control of the ball, then he extends. So I think the mean green will be able to retain possession on this one. It's the old Bill Belichick rule, don't extend the football. You don't get into situations like this. Yeah, right there, the shoulder last. looks down, jars the ball out. After further review, the runner was down at the ball at the one yard line. Play. It's a first down. So the mean green will keep it. And that also got them a first down. So first and goal from the one. And a chance to cash in the onside kick and score back to back touchdowns to pull within a score. The dive at the goal line, and touchdown, Oscar Attaway. Caps off the drive. What a turnaround here at Yeoman Stadium in the third quarter. Yeah, Attaway, 5'10", 219. He just goes up over the top. And all we need is that ball to just to break the plane of that goal line and just enough by those officials for a touchdown. 128 yards the entire first half for the Mean Green. 206 yards and three touchdowns in this third quarter. Three straight possessions they score and it's 28 to 21. And the offense that was stagnant in that first half comes alive. You gotta have guts though. And the guts are from that head coach right there, Eric Morris. His team just sc scored a touchdown and they were able to steal a possession. The surprise onside kick to now bring this game within seven as they scored on that drive. Now there's a confidence about North Texas now. You see it on that sideline. Guys are moving around a little bit differently now. All right? There's a confidence that they still have an opportunity to go and win this game with a full quarter left to play. Dare they go back to back. The Tulane front line is up closer to 10 yards away after they got burned on the last one. Noah Rauschenberg. And he'll kick this one away. And out to the 25-yard line with 17 seconds left in this third quarter. Hey, Tuesday night, it's an ESPN triple header for you. All 32 teams will be on the ice in the NHL. It starts at 6 Eastern, Leafs and Caps. Then uh, 
Bees and Blackhawks, and we'll end it up with the Flyers and the Stanley Cup champion Golden Knights Tuesday night. Those on ESPN Knights. and ESPN Plus. The Knights. Hockey night on ESPN. A triple header. That's Tuesday night, Wednesday night. NBA regular season it begins is. on ESPN. Man, have you seen Big Victor, week. Victor Wimbanyama. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my God. He, uh, he will be the nightcap on Wednesday Absolutely. night. Absolutely. coverage. Makai Hughes in what might just be the last play of this third quarter. So hold those four fingers up high because we got ourselves a ball game. 28 to 21 to Lane with the lead, but North Texas with the momentum. With Tulane head coach Willie Fritz after, it seems like North Texas seems to have found something. What can your group do to halt their momentum? Well, we're going to have to do a good job of controlling the ball right now and get another touchdown. They're, they're doing a really good job on offense, and you know, we have to do a great job offensively as well because might might need some more points. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. So one score game, Beth and Kirk. 21-7 in that third quarter. North Texas outscored Tulane to get back into this one. And now it's the veteran quarterback, Michael Pratt. Three touchdown passes. Also a couple of turnovers today. And they'll open up this fourth quarter, second and seven. Arnold Barnes is in the backfield. And a nice little stutter step met at the 30-yard line by Phil Hill in a gain of three, so it's third down. Well, that was a physical run there by Barnes, but this is the money down, third down, and you bring in Makai Hughes. 16 carries, 108 yards rushing for Makai with a touchdown. <laughs> Trips to the left, he's looking that way, now we'll shift his focus, try and run for it, and he won't get there. And another big stop for the Mean Green. And their much maligned defense, statistically this year, they come up with a big stop there. It's fourth down, and the punting unit comes on. Yeah, the senior linebacker, Kevin Wood, number 21. He actually was playing the spy on that one. It's a nice job by North Texas. Watch the spy in the middle of the field, 21. He's just watching. He's just watching Pratt. Once Pratt commits to running that or trying to pick up the first down, Kevin Wood committed to the quarterback and got him down short of a first. Fair catch at the 35. Can they make it four straight possessions with a touchdown? We'll find out on the other side. Yeah, as opposed to Kevin and Sam, your twisted T drop in. Tennessee led Alabama by 13 at the half, but here come the tie. Jason McClellan with the five-yard touchdown run after a deep pass by quarterback Jalen Milrow. 17 unanswered. It's 24-20 Alabama, Beth. Thank you, Kevin. A little similar uh, little run here for North Texas. Look at the last three drives, three scores, a couple of prolonged drives. 22 plays for 206 yards just in that third quarter alone. And now after they force the three and out their first touch of this fourth quarter. Yeah, it was the onside kick though in the third quarter by Eric Morris, the head coach, calling for the onside. Surprise Tulane and got an extra possession. Attaway with the run. And will bring up a third down. Stopped right around the line of scrimmage by Patrick Jenkins. Big down here, big down here for Tulane. Do they decide to bring pressure? They allow the four-man rush. They bring four. Rogers throws, and he's got it. Landon sides, first down. He delivered that on time. Can't say enough about Chandler Rogers. Just continues to execute. What a response coming out of the locker room. Rodgers sides again. Stormy, 
Yeah, Beth, we talk so much about the way that the on-field adjustments have been made for this offense, but Eric Morris at halftime felt his group needed an attitude adjustment as well. From an effort standpoint, he said he thought that first half was the worst holistically they had played all season long. And we talked about it from the beginning of this broadcast, how they feel this North Texas team is different. What they saw in the first half was reverting backwards, and now they're taking those positive steps forward on the field and from an effort standpoint. Yeah, look at Rodgers in the second half, big numbers. And Jenkins is able to stuff Adeo. And here we go again with a third down and four. Rodgers has hit on 10 of his last 11 throws. 42 passes on the day as they try and come from behind. Got the stack receivers at the bottom. I think Eric Morris has to take another look at it. They call his first time out. First charge time out, North Texas. Third and three, you always got to... 30 seconds. Remember that Chandler Rogers has the ability to keep the plays going, extend the play. So not only you got to keep an eye on the quarterback, but with the stack receivers, that bunch stack, you have to find a way, Beth, to get at least a press at some point. Yeah, so the, the big move, the big play really in the ball game is that onside kick, after they scored a touchdown, they got the ball right back and were able to score again immediately. Yeah, it's one of those things where things weren't working for you in the first half, but then all of a sudden in the second half, you get a lo little momentum. You go out and score on your first drive, and now guess what? Everybody's got some pep in their step, right? Everybody's moving, they're excited, and then you score again, and then you have a gutsy coach yep. who decides to go for an onside kick Surprise Tulane, and now you score another touchdown. You feel like you're right where you want to be if you're North Texas. Boy, and there's a feeling of confidence, and then there's a feeling of being unstoppable. Right now, it's the latter three straight possessions with touchdowns. Trying to keep the drive alive. And they will to the 40-yard line, and Blair Conright. Gain of seven. Would seem like an eternity to throw for Chandler Rogers. Nice blocking up front. Gave him a nice pocket, allowed him to sit back and just deliver the pass right over the middle for a first down. Rodgers, incomplete deep down the middle, and a flag flies on the play from way back. Despaini had the coverage on Conright. Pass interference. Defense number 13. That coming kind of results. First yeah, that's a tough call there because it looks like Tyler Grubb, number 13, who got called for this penalty. I thought the ball, yeah, he just oh, never no. allowed no. Conright to get there. He, I've been in those situations before as a linebacker. It's always tough, but he's not looking back at the football and the officials right there. You're not looking back. They're going to call that one. Big break here for the green, uh, mean green. First and 10. And Rodgers take advantage. He'll run. And he'll get inside the 25 and out of bounds around the 20-yard line. Gain of five. I want you to watch up top, Jamori Macklin, the wide receiver. Just a nice route. He beat the cornerback, and he's wide open. He's got a hand, and he's hoping, hoping, he's waving. That Chandler Rodgers sees him. That could have been a touchdown. Second down and five. Rodgers slings it down to the five-yard line, and it's caught by Trey Cleveland. A gain of 16, and it's first and goal. This is a good feel that Chandler Rodgers has. He's looking left, and he's waiting for Cleveland to come into his vision. And once he sees him, delivers a strike. Twice they've trailed by 21 today. Trying to punch it in to tie it up. And Tulane's defense stiffens. Second down and goal. It's a tired bunch of Tulane Green Wave defenders. And here comes a substitution for North Texas, which gives Tulane the opportunity to substitute. They've been on the field a long time as Tulane defense.
Looks like they subbed in two of their big defensive linemen to help out up front, and they jump. Pre-snap. They had... Ball start. Offense number 77. Five-yard penalty. Second down. They had Mason Richards and Roderick Brown in as fullbacks. That's, that's the new thing, right? The new trend? Mm -hmm. I saw it the other night in the NFL. Big Colin Sanders. Saunders is the defensive lineman for the Saints. He's playing fullback. So you bring in the, the big guys for a pre-snap penalty. Second and goal. That'll push him back out across the five. Macklin top of the screen. Rodgers looks that way. Throws underneath and it's caught Landon Sides. Touchdown North Texas. And they have come all the way back from a 21 point deficit to tie it up here in the fourth. You want to see the face of danger? That's Chandler Rogers in the face of danger. He's got Darius Hodges coming off the edge. He knows he's going to get hit, but delivers an absolute dart to sides for a touchdown. Staring in the face of danger, Chandler Rogers. We talked about cool, calm, and smooth, and also a bit of toughness for the touchdown. Play. Another 300-yard passing day for Chandler Rogers, his second touchdown toss. And the extra point ties it up at 28. Not always there when you call, but Chandler Rogers on the outside on time. ESPN College Football is presented by Boost Infinite. Get unlimited wireless and the latest iPhone every year. Now that signature pink facade of Brennan's down in the French Quarter serving up that Bananas Foster since the 1950s. Actually invented at Brennan's. They go through about 35,000 pounds of bananas Ooh. per year. Speaking of bananas, how about this game? All Tulane in the first half, all North Texas in the second half. They have scored 21 unanswered points and dominated this second half. After the Tulane defense was the story in the first half, it's the Mean Green offense here in the second. 9.08 to play. In the last 20 years, it has happened just once that Tulane has blown a 21-point lead. They will try not to let that happen again as we check in with the studio. All right, and Beth, your AT&T 5G keeping fans connected second screen viewing options. Bucky Irving has three big touchdowns for Oregon, who leads Wazoo over on ABC. Ollie Gordon, 160 yards rushing, two touchdowns. Oklahoma State, West Virginia battling on ESPN. Thanks, Kevin. Three and out. The last time Tulane had it, Michael Pratt picks up about four to the 29. Ethan Wislowski on the stop. Well, they find themselves in a similar situation. They were the same thing last week versus Memphis. They had to find a way to pull that game out, having been down, not to giving up a lead, but having to find their way back. And if there's a guy who you trust, it's Michael Pratt in these types of situations with the game tied. Pratt, we'll check it down. Makai Hughes out of the backfield. It's going to be third and one. Jordan Brown on the hit. Again, anxious moments here. That's what we were just talking about. 42 and one with a 21 point lead in the last 20 years. Navy got him. A few years ago, trailing 24 to nothing. Twice today, North Texas has been down 21. Hughes trying to get that first down, and he does. Gains four more to add to his total. Now 112 yards rushing today for Mackay. There's still no panic, right? And we get that North Texas has been on this run right now. And there should be a sense of panic amongst other teams. But Tulane is like, no, we're fine. Let's just put a drive together and go out and score 
And it starts by getting that initial first down. Michael Pratt, his 37th career start. He's been the guy for four years here at Tulane at quarterback. Play action. Plenty of time. Good coverage downfield. And again, he's got he's forced into a scramble and a slide. Picks up three. Yeah, you know, the one thing that North Texas is doing, they're playing more coverage. They're sending six, seven guys into coverage, and they're keeping just a four-man rush and one extra spy on Pratt. Second down and seven to Jaquan Jackson, and he is going to be about a yard shy. It will be third down and one again, a gain of six. They're inviting Tulane to run the football. This is just a three-man rush. That means they've got eight guys back in coverage. So they're inviting Tulane to run the football. Here, a big third down again. This time from shotgun from Pratt. Hughes, wow. good churn of the legs again, and he's got it with the second effort out across the 49. Power. You know, one thing that I looked at with Makai Hughes this week, how he holds the football, too. He's a wrist above elbow guy. So that means he's always protecting the football because it's up high, it's right next to his body, and it gives him the ability to keep those feet moving, keep those feet churning. That time he got enough push for a first down. That's back-to-back -back third downs that they've gone to Hughes for short yardage, and he's come through. The redshirt freshman out of Birmingham. Pratt deep across the middle, and it's caught at the 31-yard line. Lawrence Keyes hauls it in. We hadn't called his name in a long time, Beth. And this time, North Texas, instead of bringing three, they brought an extra man. They had a four-man pressure, a four-man rush, I should say. And Keyes found the hole in the defense. Hughes trying to get to the outside, and he's hauled down. Mason Richards, and a loss of one. The job, Richards. He's just getting up the field and makes the play. That hasn't been one of the better plays of the outside zone for Tulane. The meat of their rushing attack has been in between the tackles. Good job by Richards keeping it inside. There's some confusion here on second down and 11. Got plenty of time on the play clock. Pratt settles them down. Looking left, throwing that way, and he makes the completion down to the 26, Lawrence Keys. Then a manageable third down, a gain of eight. A manageable, but a huge third down. Right, Beth? Because if you don't get it here, are you in field goal range, or do you feel confident that a three, if you don't get it here, is enough to win this game. I, I have to think, unless this ball is inside the 20-yard line, they're going to go for it on fourth down, Beth, if they don't get it here on third. Clock continues to run under four minutes to go. He'll try it on the ground with Hughes. He finds a seam, and he's got it inside the 20. The vision and the patience by the youngster behind Sincere Hainsworth again. Man, you saw the same thing. You get excited when you get good blocking up front. Watch the center, 52. That's a pancake block. We talked about Bananas Fosters earlier. That gets a little pancakes in there with Sincere Hainsworth. Pratt throwing to the end zone. Up for grabs. Incomplete intended for Keys. Lorenzo Thompson with the coverage. I think this is on the quarterback. This has to be back shoulder. If this ball's back shoulder, that's a touchdown. But because it's right there, it allowed Thompson to get a hand in there, and that's just good coverage by Lorenzo Thompson, the junior. Pratt had hit on nine throws in a row prior to that one. Second down and 10. Barnes, the youngster, nothing doing. And the mean green will force a third and long. Carson Kropp, the first guy there. Not a lot of success on those outside zone plays. The best running play for Tulane has been straight ahead.
But nice reaction by this defense. Oh, they're throwing North up Texas. the Mean Joe Green on this big defensive play right here. Well, they've been and playing. the fire truck. They've been playing like that uh -huh. in the second half. Calling for all 11 guys to make a play right here on third down and 12. Blitz coming up the middle. It's picked up. Pratt finds some room to run. Beats his man at the 10, and he takes it all the way in. Touchdown, Tulane. 19 yards for Michael Pratt. Oh, the veteran makes a huge play with two and a half minutes to go as he converts a third down and 12. Take a look at Makai Hughes, though, the tailback. He gets enough. And when I say just a piece of the linebacker, Jordan Brown, that's just all you need. You don't have to make the killer block, but just enough that allowed Michael Pratt to race into the end zone. So here we go, just like we talked about at the beginning. North Texas offense against Tulane defense to decide this one. This week's college football rankings are brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Number one, Georgia, the week off. Ohio State stays undefeated with the home win over Penn State today. Texas in a bit of a nail biter. Oregon on top of Washington State right now on ABC. Still to come, Michigan and Michigan State tonight. Duke at Florida State. Late night, Pac-12 after dark tonight is UCLA at Stanford. And Cameron Horton will decide to bring this one out, and that's a mistake. Cut down inside the 15. And that'll cost him about 12 yards by bringing that out. Shaquem Laster with the stop. 2.30 to play when we come back. Coming up shortly over on ABC, it's Duke and Florida State for Saturday Night Football. Coverage starts at 7.30 Eastern, 4.30 Pacific. Big showdown tonight in the ACC. So after a big drive engineered by Michael Pratt to get Tulane the lead, we turn our attention to Chandler Rogers and the mean green offense that has been unstoppable in the second half after getting shut out in the first half. And on first down, it's a first down completion to Damon Ward. That's a terrific throw, Beth. You don't understand how difficult that throw is. He's got to get it over the top of the corner and in front of the safety. There's not a lot of room for error in that throw. But a great start to a drive. 16 yards on the pickup. Rodgers taken down. Tremendous pursuit from Tyler Grubbs. Wow. Didn't see him till he was right on him, and now North Texas will have to burn a timeout. He was like a flash. He's going to show up on the right side of the screen. Once he sees the quarterback commit to running, game that's where operator. Tyler Please Grubbs comes and makes a play. To two minutes. It's a nice little tandem that he and Jesus Machado have been able to go out together and Thank play you. well. That was a huge play getting North Texas behind the chains. And also forces them to have to call a timeout as well. Let's check in with Stormy. You know, if there's one thing that Chandler Rogers says he feels really confident about his game, it's his experience and preparation and being able to say the right things at the right time to his teammates when they need it. His message before coming out to this drive was believe. He told everybody, went up to him one by one, nudged each one of them, said believe, we're gonna do this, we're gonna get this done. Hasn't happened much that a team has rallied from a 21-point deficit to win this season. Only one time against Tulane, in fact, in the last 20 years has a team done it. Two minutes to go. Rodgers, Hodges coming off the edge, couldn't quite get there, and Ward is wide open for a first down across the 40 and another double digit.
double-digit gain, 17 yards. If you're North Texas, you got to find where Darius Hodges is, number six. He gets to the quarterback, but he tries to get the sack, and he falls to the ground, which allows the quarterback to get out of the pocket, keeps his eyes downfield for the game. Rodgers incomplete behind Ward on that throw. Clock stops with 1.39 to play. North Texas with just the one timeout remaining. You're going to need your wide receivers to have to make a play, whether it's Jamari Macklin, Roderick Burns, Damon Ward. 334 yards passing and a couple of touchdowns here in the second half for Rodgers. Two passes shy of 50 on the afternoon. Second down and 10. Incomplete behind his man again. Roderick Burns tried to spin around to grab it. Now, but Chandler Rogers wanted him to sit. He saw that Burns was trying to continue across the field, and Rogers said, no, sit in the zone. Sit right in between those linebackers and safeties. Third down coming. Is Tulane only going to put one guy on Macklin to the top of the screen? Man, miscommunication at last one could have been a big play. But third down, Tulane just playing zone. Safety in the middle. Rodgers looking for Macklin. And it's underneath. And Jamori is going to be just short. Couple of yards shy, so it's fourth down. This will be their fifth attempt. They're one of four today. Yeah, you go for it. Fourth and two. Clock running, number 90 up top two. Devin Deal getting his hands up. May not get there on a sack, but the ball's going to come out quickly. Wow, they're using a ton of time here. Needing a touchdown to tie it up. Blitz coming. It's picked up. Is broken up by DJ Douglas. And the two lane defense holds, and they will take over on downs with 48 seconds to go. Beth, you knew the ball was going to come out quickly. It was fourth and two, so it was going to be quick. Tulane brought pressure, and a nice job by DJ Douglas, knowing where the marker was, and fights over the top, and almost had an interception to seal this game. The two-lane defense with their fourth, fourth down stop of the day. And just the one timeout remaining for North Texas. Into victory formation here for Michael Pratt. They had to earn this one, Beth. And that, will the Mean Green even call it? They're just going to let it go. They'll have to snap one more time. Play clock is about, uh, what, five seconds in front of the game clock right now. And Willie Fritz just told Michael Prack, let that work down. They'll take a knee and that'll do it. When they had to have it, the two-lane defense made the play. After Michael Pratt engineered the game-winning touchdown drive late in the fourth quarter, Tulane holds on to win it. And at 6-1, and one, they are bowl eligible for the second year in a row as they beat North Texas 35-28. to 28. Valiant comeback by the Mean Green. They trailed by 21 and made things tight. You're going to get everybody's best. Everyone's best. They are now hunted, no longer hunters. And let's send it down to Stormy. Well, Michael, a hard-earned victory formation there. How good did that feel to finally get this one over with? It felt really good. You know, it was a hard-fought game. They came out here. They played really well today. And, you know, we had a couple mistakes, but battled back. And, you know, that's, that's what matters, came out with the victory. Can you take me into your mindset on that final go-ahead drive? 13 plays, 75 yards to get this thing done. Yeah, we just had to execute. You know, the, the plays were there all, all game long. Um, you know, really credit to my offensive coordinator for, you know, calling great plays all night. And, uh, you know, the last shot, we got the go, offense together. Go. And we had to, you know, put one, get down the field and go score. And, you know, that's what we did, made some plays. What was the feeling when you ran it in in that moment? 
Oh, it felt really good. <laughs> it felt really good. I was, I was going to take the one-on-one, -on -one and I just saw it open up right in front of me, and it felt great. You know, we talked earlier this week that uh, this is a team that no matter what situation you're in, any moment, you feel like you can claw your way out of it. What is it about this team that you guys have that? Absolutely. Um, you know, that's just a credit to Coach Fritz and the culture that he's implemented here at Tulane, um, the character, the guys. Um, you know, we, we go through these situations all the time in practice. You know, we stay locked in. We stay engaged. You know, the leadership on this team is tremendous. And, you know, to be able to battle, we didn't play our best game today. Um, you know, we really didn't play that well at all, um, quite frankly. But, you know, we battled. We finished all the way through the end, all the way through fourth quarter. And, and, and that's what matters. Thanks so much, Michael. Thank Appreciate you so much. You. Have a good one. 194 yards passing with three touchdowns. 70 yards rushing with another score for Michael Pratt, including that impressive game-winning drive to seal the deal late. And then the two-lane defense with four fourth down stops on the day, that final one to seal it. So Tulane stays on top of the AAC along with SMU, Florida Atlantic, and UTSA right there with them. Our final score, Tulane 35, North Texas 28. For Kirk Morrison and Stormy Bonatoni, I'm Beth Mullins. Thanks so much for watching. It's so long from New Orleans on this homecoming weekend at Yulman Stadium. We'll get you back to the studio with Kevin Connors.